Thanks for joining me. This is Danny, and welcome back to my 1.12.2 series. It has been a long time. And we are playing with extreme reactors today. We are going to make a big reactor. Um, we're just going to do a reactor today to generate a lot of RF, and probably in the next episode, we will be making turbines in order to make a lot, lot, lot more RF. Um, but what we're going to do is we are going to try to make the most efficient reactor possible in the space that we have. So you, if you happen to watch my Chisels and Bits series, you may have seen that we built this building in that series, and I am going to be filling in this corner with a reactor and it's it's a seven by seven by well it's a seven by seven by nine or ten eleven space something like that um we're actually going, just going to do a seven by seven by seven today and then we can always make it taller in the future and what that means is we're going to have a reactor that on the inside is going to be five by five by five because obviously um we need blocks for the perimeter of it and uh we are going to have four or five control rods in the center of this and we're going to talk about cooling and the most efficient way to cool the reactor and also the most efficient way to set up the control rods and to get lots of RF out of our reactor. Um, so of course the first thing we're going to have to do is craft a bunch of blocks. I'm going to do that off camera but I'm just going to show you a little bit um, of what sort of materials are going to be involved in this. Now we, because we're building a kind of a big extreme reactor and um, we're gonna need a lot of materials so um i set up auto crafting already but we're gonna be needing about 250 of these reactor casings probably a little bit less than that but um i'm just gonna go big so that we have lots left over um so this is about what we're gonna need we have to craft a bunch of graphite which requires coal and we're gonna need a bunch of iron 500 some iron and a little bit of redstone and a lot of coal out of a lot of that so um, that's the main thing we're gonna need is a lot of those and I'm going to be using those then to craft a bunch of other blocks so I'm going to be crafting um, some fuel rods also we're going to need let's see so we in this reactor we are going to have five fuel rods one two three four five and each of those fuel rods is going to be five tall um, so we're going to need 25 of the fuel rods. And again, more graphite and more iron and more uranium. Um, now uranium and yellow orium are basically the same thing. In this particular pack, um, we are getting mostly uranium. I think I have a tiny little bit of yellow orium in here. I don't even know how I ended up with it, but... Um, I think that when we process stuff, we always end up with uranium in this particular pack. Um, and then at the top of each of those fuel rods, and we'll see, we're going to assemble this together, so we'll see how this all works. But on the top of each of those, we're going to need a reactor control rod. So we are going to need exactly five of those. And for the, that, we're going to need more stuff, <laughs> as you can see. So this, it's going to get a little bit expensive, but you know it's certainly nothing that we can handle. This is definitely a kind of mid to late game project that we're doing here with big reactors, or with extreme reactors. And then we're going to need a couple of ports. So first of all, we're going to need um, a, not a Tesla port, because we're not doing Tesla, but we're going to need an RF port. So this is a redstone flux port. And here we're going to be using some of our reactor casings, which are still being made oh because it's making all this graphite oh boy okay so i'm going to get back to you on this i'm actually just going to craft all the blocks that we need and then i'll meet you out there with them all right i'm still waiting for some auto crafting to go on but i've got enough to get us started so these are the blocks we're going to need for the reactor that we're going to build um, of course we're going to need a bunch of reactor casings more than that um, we're going to need some reactor glass not necessarily need um, we can use reactor casings or reactor glass um, I want to be able to see inside because it looks cool. So I'm doing a bunch of glass, which is basically just made with the casing and the glass. Um, we're going to need a reactor controller. Um, that's basically the one control block. And of course, it needs a diamond. So that's, you know, that's that. No big deal, right? And two re reactor access ports. We need at least one. We're going to do two. Um, and you'll see why in a bit. And a redstone flux 
power tap. This is how we're going to pull RF out of it. And then we need our control rods and our fuel rods, as we had talked about earlier. Earlier, And then I'm also adding a redstone port, which is going to allow us to control this thing using redstone. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up our frame. And like I said, we're doing a 7x7. Seven seven. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And, and then the interior is going to be a 5x5. Five five. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these reactor casing blocks to build the frame one two three well, that's right i can fly four five and then this is going to be the top and then we may have to reconfigure the uh, oh and i just if you right click on a reactor that is incomplete it will tell you um that not enough control rods reactor requires at least one it's going to tell you there's something wrong with the reactor if it's not complete so there's the frame and that's basically the footprint that it's going to be um, and then I'm going to put the glass on all the sides and I'm going to cover the bottom, but the bottom is just going to be casing. I think I'm going to do glass on the top as well. Oh, I didn't do this side. Okay. So I need, <laughs> need more of that, but I'm going to put glass just like this on all the sides, um, except the front because we're going to have some of our special blocks up in the front. Putting our reactor controller right here. This is the block we're going to click on to access the control stuff. Um, the reactor. These ports are where we're going to input our fuel, so Yalorium. Um, I think I'm going to put one... Actually, it might be a good idea to put one down there. Eh, you know what? I'm going to put it on the front so that we can have access to it. I'll put another one maybe over here. And one of them is going to be input, and the other is going to be output. So we're going to say that we're in outlet mode. So this is where our Eulorium is going to be input, and this is where our waste, which happens to be called cyanite ingots, are going to be output. So they're going to end up going out here, and then we'll have some kind of pipes or whatever to pull that stuff out. The redstone flux power tap, this is obviously where we're going to be pulling power from. Um, I think I might put that over here for now. And then... We have the redstone port. Now this is what we're going to use to control the reactor with redstone. So I'm actually going to put that maybe right there, somewhere near the uh, near the controller so that when we right click on this, you see that we're gonna have all kinds of options. Um, we can toggle on and off by giving this thing a redstone signal. Um, we'll either toggle it on and off we have all these different just options of things and we're going to be using this to just to turn the reactor on and off and what we're going to actually be doing is we're going to be looking at our power supply and if we are running low on power actually i don't really want that there i think i'm going to put it over here by the power so when we give this guy a redstone pulse it's going to uh either set from signal in other words it's going to be on if the signal is on or it'll toggle on pulse so like we give it a pulse if it's on, it'll turn off. If we get another pulse, if it's off, it'll turn on. We actually want set from pulse. So, I mean, set from signal so that when it has a redstone signal, we want it to be running all the time. Um, and as soon as we get rid of that redstone signal, we want it to stop running. And then finally, the control rods. So these, the, con the reactor control rod goes on the top. Now we can, one thing that's new with extreme reactors that wasn't in uh, big reactors, which was in 1710, is that we can actually turn this sideways. So we could have our reactor control rods on the side and have our fuel rods running horizontally. Um, we have to choose one or the other. We can't have like some fuel rods being vertical and some horizontal. Um, but I'm just going to do vertical because... Sure, because <laughs> I like it that way. There are also some new visuals with the control rods too. Like you'll be able to see the waste and the fuel within the rod, which is kind of cool. Like visually in the world. What? Okay, so those are all, all of our fuel rods. Now I just need to fill in the rest of this with glass and we will have a multi-block structure. When I place this last block, if I did everything right, yay, we get a multi-block structure. So there it is, there is our big reactor. Oh, so now if we right click on this, we will see that we have some controls and we can turn this thing on and off. We can put um, Yellorium in here or Uranium 
and it will run and it will produce a bunch of RF for us. Um, however, it's not going to be particularly efficient right now because we don't have a coolant in there. Um, because the way the reactors work is um, essentially the amount of power that it generates is based on kind of the differential between the heat produced by the reactors and the and the heat produced or the heat the temperature of the casing um, so what you want to do is you want to transfer heat <laughs> basically you want to transfer heat from the control from the uh, fuel rods out to the casing. We want to have a coolant in there that is going to absorb the radiation caused by the reaction <laughs> that's happening inside the fuel rods and to transfer that um, into heat that radiates out to the casing. Um, and there are lots and lots of different blocks. Now, of course, this reactor will work. It'll work perfectly fine the way it is now. It just won't be very efficient. It's not like going to blow up or anything like that. They don't, they don't do that. And there's a lot, a lot, a lot of different materials that we can use um, as coolants. What we're going to do is we're going to use the most efficient, which also happens to be some of the most expensive materials in the game. And they have four different properties. So there's, there's absorption, there's heat efficiency, there's moderation and there's conductivity we want something that's going to have a high heat efficiency in order to basically transfer that heat outward and if we want to be really really efficient about this um, with our five fuel rods in here we could make this reactor even bigger and and have more layers of coolant between them and the more we do that the more efficient it's going to be the less fuel it's going to use and the more RF it will generate um, but of course it'll also take up quite a bit more space we're actually going to be using two different fluids for this of course there are solid blocks and there are fluid blocks that we can use as coolants even air is a coolant so right now we do have technically a coolant in there um, we're going to use gelid cryothium and liquid ender or resonant ender um, the gelid cryothium has a very high heat efficiency and absorption. It will transfer heat um, very efficiently. Resonant Ender is actually more efficient. However, it is it has a low moderation value. Now, the moderation value basically is how well it prevents interference between the rods. Um, so now the way these control rods work is that they will radiate heat in the four cardinal directions. They do not radiate heat diagonally, they only radiate heat in the four directions. And um, they will also radiate heat into each other, increasing their efficiency, which is why we have the setup as a plus, and we have them as many as possible touching each other. So in the area between the rods, we're going to be putting the gelid cryothium. And around the edge, we're going to be putting liquid ender. And if we wanted to be even more efficient, we would make this two blocks wider in both directions, and we would put yet another layer of <laughs> resonant ender. Of course, that would be way more expensive. It would require a lot more space, and, I mean, it would add a little bit of efficiency. So I think this is the best trade-off. Considering the space that we have, this is probably about the most efficient and most high RF-producing reactor that we can get in this space. All right, I'm ready to fill this guy with fluid. This is going to be a little bit tough. We have to do them one level at a time, um, otherwise they're going to kind of pour into each other or whatever. And they're kind of hard to work with, um, these these particular fluids. So I've got a reservoir with some gelid cryothium in them. In it, I'm going to need 20... 20. Yeah, 5 times 4, 20. I'm going to need 20 buckets, so I'm going to end up filling up this reservoir twice. And then I also have a reservoir of 90 <laughs> resonant ender, because that's how much we need. We actually need 90. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to place... Uh, actually, we're going to hit V to set this to empty. And we're going to place that there. Now it spreads out. It's cold. If we go in it, we're going to get hurt. <laughs> and then the resonant ender. It actually... And it drops. Um, we'll see. We're going to put oh again we have to hit v so that we're setting it on empty and then that's over there uh and the resonant ender is a little tricky too if you fall in it or if you drop something in it it teleports it we don't know where it went <laughs> it's gone we may never find it or we might it's probably close by oh what the
And that same thing will happen to me if I fall in it. Um, should I live dangerously and show you? Sure, why not, right? <laughs> so it just teleported me into some random place. So yeah, that's how that works. Um, also, this uh, cryothium does drop. <laughs> so, like, no matter where you place it, it, it's, it is affected by gravity. And we want each one of these blocks. We don't want to just put the fluid up here and let it flow down. We want every one of these blocks to have endurium in it. Um, so yeah, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do a whole lot of this all the way around. There, it's all in there. That was a bit of work. I did get teleported out a couple times. <laughs> just from, like, misplacing. It actually only required eight, 80 buckets. And um, the reservoir holds 90, so I just left it in the thing. Actually, I'll show you. the. I set up some automation to produce these fluids and to fill these things up. So I can show you what I did in a little bit. Um, but now we can put this glass back up on the top and reform our big reactor, our big extreme reactor. Ta -da. All right. Now uh, let's grab some uranium. Throw it in there. Wow, that's taking a lot of fuel. Oh, okay, so it's almost full. And we will now activate the reactor. So it's heating up. Our casing is heating up. Our core is heating up. And we have an energy buffer here. And we are currently producing 11 kilo RF per tick. And that will kind of stabilize as this heats up. And we are using 0 0.16 millibuckets of fuel. So <laughs> that is very, very, very efficient. So we're producing a lot of power and we're not really using all that much fuel for it. Nice. And as we will see later on, um, once we hook this thing up to turbines, we will be able to produce way, way more power than that with probably like at least 10 times that much power. Cool, and this guy will just continue running. Um, it'll burn fuel, even if the buffer is full. Right now, we're completely wasting power, um, and that's why I have the redstone port so that we can turn this thing on and off as needed. So right now, I'm going to deactivate it so that we're not wasting fuel, and it will gradually cool down and stop producing RF, and the temperature will drop. So I'm upgrading and if a fully infused advanced power cell from RF tools, um, this will allow us to input output very quickly. And all I really need to do is put this thing right there and put this power thing in here to link it to the rest of our network. And then it will, it should be drawing power. No, it's not because we need to set this to input. So now it's going to be drawing power out of our big reactor. Nice. With this redstone port on here, set up the way we had it, <clears throat> set from signal. Um, if we give this guy a redstone signal, the reactor will turn on. If we turn off the redstone signal, the reactor will turn off, which of course is what we want. Uh, oh no! Crap. Oh, oh, I found oh, good. I got it before. <laughs> nice. So <laughs> that's one of the problems with this. Whenever you break a block out here by accident, it falls into the resonant ender. And then it teleports away. <laughs> Whee! All right, so I'm going to have to reset this. Set from signal, commit. Okay, so the cyanide is a waste product, essentially, of that whenever we burn a single cyanite, whenever we burn a single ingot of eulorium, it will output an ingot of cyanite into here, or actually into here. And we can pull that out of here because we have this thing set to output. Um, we can drop that into something. And the cyanide we can actually use um, for some other things. So we're going to actually be using cyanide when, in order to make our turbine. Um, and then we can also craft eight cyanide into a plutonium ingot 
um, which we can then use just like uranium or ylorium. So we can we basically end up getting to reuse some of our waste. So out of every eight ylorium that we burn, we get another one. We kind of get another one back that we can then use um, to uh, power our reactor. For now, we're just going to hold on to that cyanite because we're going going to want to use it for our um, turbine, although we can craft cyanite from sand and uranium, so it's we don't really have to do this, uh, but it'll just make it easier for us in the future. All right, we're filling up. Hooray! So I've got XNET. I'm actually using the same XNET system that I'm using in, in my next, in the building next door. Um, basically, it's pulling the uranium out of our RS system through an interface, and it's just inputting it into here. So that's just going to keep that full. It's doing it really slowly, but it doesn't matter um, because it's not going to burn it. <laughs> it's definitely not going to burn it faster than that. That would be crazy. Uh, and then it's just always extracting from here. So anytime any cyanide ends up in there, it's going to extract. So now we're going to make a more sophisticated on-off mechanism that's going to allow the reactor to run a little bit more efficiently. So I've added two more redstone ports. So our reactor now has three redstone ports on it these two redstone ports are going to be outputting redstone based on the contents of energy in the buffer this guy is going to be receiving it's still going to be doing the same thing that it was doing before it's going to be getting a signal and turning the reactor on when it has a signal and turning the reactor off when it doesn't have a signal so what we want this thing to do is we want it to start running when our energy buffer gets really really low so um, I'm saying 10% and then we want it to continue running beyond 10% all the way until it gets up to about 90% um, I may adjust that we're gonna see um, how much power we get after it shuts off um, because after it shuts off it does continue to produce power for a while as it cools so I might actually lower that to like maybe 80% in fact let's start at 80% so I've got this guy, this redstone react or this reactor redstone port. We have it set to output energy amount. It's going to activate when below 10%. So you can toggle between above and below. Um, so I said active while below 10% and then I clicked commit. So that means that this guy is going to output a redstone signal whenever we are below 10% um, in our energy buffer. This one I have set to be active while above it's the same thing it's the output energy amount percent active while above 90 percent i'm actually going to change that to 80 percent say commit and now this one will output a redstone signal um, when we have 80 percent or more in our energy buffer um, so what we wanted to do is we wanted to turn on when this guy starts outputting redstone we wanted to remain on even after this redstone signal goes away until we get a redstone signal from this one um, so, and of course, the best way to do that with vanilla redstone would be just to use a flip-flop. Um, this would be, I believe you would call this a D flip-flop. Um, it doesn't really matter what we call it. <laughs> it's going to work. So the idea is I've, I've just got kind of a demo set up here with two levers. Um, and this is going to be our output. So we'll pretend there's something here. Actually, we will have something there. We're going to have a redstone transmitter, but we'll get to that in a second. Um, so what's going to happen is if we say that this is our um, redstone coming out of this port so when our redstone when our power is low below 10 percent this lever will basically be turned on and as you can see we've got a straight line coming over here so if that lever's on we're obvi obviously going to get a redstone signal here um, at, the, at that point no matter what we do with this lever that one's always going to be on right um, when we turn this one off we still have a redstone signal over here um, because we've got a redstone torch there um, that's going to be powering this signal. Um, so then it's going to stay on until we turn this lever on. Um, as soon as this lever is on, it's going to power this block, which is, of course, going to turn this into a not gate. <clears throat> and then we will have no redstone signal over here. Um, so then our power is going to fill up. Eventually, it's going to reach 100%. This guy is going to turn off. Um, this redstone signal remains active because we have this torch here. So we've basically got another NOT gate feeding into this NOT gate. And it will remain that way until this lever turns on. So right now, we have plenty of power. 
um, both of these levers are turned off um, and then when our power runs below 10 percent so at, so right now we might be using power it's going to be going down to you know 70 60 50 40 whatever as soon as we hit 10 percent this guy turns on and then the th whole thing reverses so it's so this is actually what you would call a memory circuit in redstone i'm going to have a redstone transmitter here it's a block from rf tools that accepts a redstone signal and then it's going to transmit that signal to a receiver so i'm going to take one of our receivers and i'm going to right click on that and we can now see that it said set to channel 2 so and if we look at this one in um, JEI up here in the one probe up here it says channel 2 these are both set to channel 2 so whenever this transmitter receives a redstone signal it is going to transmit that redstone wirelessly to that receiver so right now that receiver is outputting a redstone of 2 in fact if we break this we'll see um, I mean, not a redstone signal too, but a full redstone signal. So we can see this guy's outputting a redstone signal. Um, so I'm going to put that back. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here. We've got a redstone transmitter over here that's coming out of this other port. And we want to click on that side of the block. It's going to face whichever side of the block we click on. Um, it doesn't really matter which way we're facing. It's just whichever side of the block, whichever corner you click on is where it's going to face. So so that this little green arrow is coming from a redstone source. Um, this currently is chan channel minus one, which basically means it doesn't have a channel yet. So I'm going to set up another redstone receiver, and I'm going to click on it. And now these are both set to channel three. You can see channel three. And in our one probe again, we can see that this is channel three. So now I'm going to go down here. I'm going to replace this lever with this redstone receiver, which is going to be the thing that's going to output a redstone signal when our power is sufficient, when we have 80%. Um, as you can see right now, it is not outputting a redstone signal. And then here, we want to set up a redstone transmitter that is going to receive whatever redstone signal we're getting from here and output it. Oh, you know what we didn't do though? <laughs> then we need to take this guy and right click on this so now these are both set to channel four so now as soon as i place this here our reactor port here is going to get a redstone signal and we're going to see our reactor kick in and it's going to run until this buffer is full so this is step one of two by the way we're going to there's going to be another step to this process um so there we go we should look up there and see that our reactor is running if i can get out of here it is hooray and as soon as we get up to 80% full, we should see that it turns off. So right now, neither one of those things are outputting a redstone signal. So this is not outputting a redstone signal. It says output zero. This one also has output zero um, until this guy gets down or up to 80%. So you can see it's going to run a lot more efficiently now So because we're actually doing our maximum and we're getting... Heat, heat it up enough where it's going to be outputting our maximum. We're also going to be pulling power at the same time. So, um, it, okay, so now it's shut off. We can see our energy buffer was above 80%, and it's shut off. And if we look down here, we will see that this re receiver is outputting a signal of 15. This one is outputting 0. You can see that at the bottom. Output 0 and output 15. And it will continue to output 15 until our buffer goes down. Now we can see... It's still generating a little bit of RF. Our buffer is at 92% full. So it looks like 80% is probably a pretty good um, place. Actually, let's see how far it goes. It looks like it's going to get to about, what? Yeah, so we could probably go up to about like 85% safely. Um, so next time it'll get up to about 97% full, which is cool. That's fine. So, so now it's shut off. We're completely offline, right? So now what we're going to do is we are going to use a power relay from also from RF tools and I'm going to face it this way. Um, you can see there's letters on each side that represent this is up. The bottom side says D. This side says R for right. The other side says L for left. And this guy we are going to let it allow power through. Um, when it has a redstone signal, when it has no redstone signal when redstone signal is off. So this is the, this is corresponding to the sides down, up, back, front, left, right. Everything's at zero. So it's not going to let any power through if it doesn't have a signal. If it has a signal, it's going to let power 
from the left side, so L, we're going to set this to input mode. So it's going to allow it to input, and um, we'll say, actually, what? how much is this thing producing? I don't remember now, but and we'll just put it at a really high number. I'll put it at like 20, and it's going to make us do it all over. Okay, 20, 20,000. And then the right side, we're going to set to output, and we're going to allow that also 20,000. So basically, it's going to allow power through from the left, input from the left, output to the right, um, whenever this guy receives a redstone signal. And then we're going to take our power cell over here, and we're going to put it over there. So right now, it's not pulling any power um, because we're not getting a redstone signal. So then we're going to set up our RF monitor from RF tools. And oh boy, wait, wait a minute here. Let's let's reconfigure this a little bit. I'm gonna put that power cell on the top. And we're gonna say that we're going to allow power to go through the top. So and then this whatever we can just set back. It doesn't actually it doesn't really matter because there's nothing gonna be there anyway. So so we're taking in from the left side, we're going out to the top at 20,000 RF per tick um, when we receive a redstone signal. So again, we're going to set up our RF monitor um, facing that guy. And we're going to say when this power is below a certain point, um, we're going to let power through. So then basically what's going to happen, it's just going to start pulling power from our energy buffer. It's not even, it's not going to start the reactor. Um, it's So the reactor doesn't really care <laughs> whether or not this thing receives a redstone signal. All it cares about is that, hey, once we get down to a certain point, then you're going to kick in. When we have less than 80% in our advanced power cell, we're going to output a redstone signal and this thing will start pulling power. We will look in our buffer and we'll see that it is pulling power right now. Um, not very much. It's just pulling a little bit of power at a time. As soon as it gets up to 80%, it's going to stop pulling power again. So basically, this is our overflow. So when we're not producing enough power out there, this thing's going to be pulling power. And it's just going to continue pulling power. Um, and our reactor isn't going to start running until our buffer gets down um, to below 10%. So just to test that, why don't we just crank this up to 90% for now? And we should end up pulling a whole bunch of power out here. And we can see our reactor still isn't running. I'm just going to show you real quickly that this is still on, even though n neither of these are outputting a redstone signal. This circuit will just remember whatever the last um, output was, which is why it's called a memory circuit. So right now it's off. Um, if we just, for fun, change that buffer, or change this to, say, whenever we're less than, I don't know, 35%, we'll see. Oops. 35%. So it'll output a redstone signal. We should see this guy. Oh, what? Oh, I didn't press commit. Okay, 35% commit. So we should see that guy kick in right away because, of course, our other side of a redstone signal um, kicked in. Even though this is no longer outputting a redstone signal, it remembered that <laughs> the last setting. So our thing will stay on until this one triggers um, so at 80 hey I wanted that to be 85% darn it I forgot to click commit again so this is gonna go all the way up to 85% again and then it'll shut off yay that's it for extreme reactors today and of course in the next episode we're gonna be producing a lot lot more power um, because we're gonna be setting up some turbines and we're, we're gonna be getting a lot of power at very very low cost although it will take a considerable amount of work to do it so I do hope you join me for that. If you do have any questions, comments, ideas, or whatever, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And of course, if you did enjoy this, if you learned from it, or whatever, um, do be sure to click the like button below. And to join me next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.